what up, and well met. I'm Yulata Rants, this is Muscle and Magica, and you, my friend, just accepted an apology. Now, this is not your typical quest. Uh, in fact, this is not really a quest at all. This is more of a content patch. And I know that content patches are not always entertaining or exciting or sexy, but you need to download content patches because they are beneficial, they're sometimes necessary, and more often than not, they are an attempt by the creator to make up for some kind of insufficiency in previous content. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do today. Make up for what I see as an insufficiency in my previous content. And for that reason, I'm going to forego my typical video game analogies and goofy editing only for this video because I want to make sure that I communicate effectively and I don't want anything to get lost in translation or analogy or illusion or goofy Spongebob references. But don't worry, as soon as this patch is over, the servers will go back up and you can go back to your regular questing. This quest is primarily for people who either didn't understand or perhaps even disagreed with my last quest, which was entitled The Myth of the Magical Micronutrient Fairy. If you saw that quest and you thought, yeah, mm-hmm, right on, funny Zelda analogies, this one isn't so much for you. This is going to be a clarification on that last one. However, you're free to stay and watch if you like. Additionally, thank you to those who did express doubts, concerns, confusion, disagreements in the comments of that last video. I always want to foster an open dialogue. I enjoy it. I appreciate you hearing something that you weren't sure about and rather than taking me at face value speaking up in the comments because that's how we learn things. If you have no idea what I'm talking about or if you haven't gotten a chance to check it out yet, feel free to go ahead. I'm not going to wait for you because why would I? You can just press the pause button. Now I made some mistakes in that last video. Not factual mistakes, not informational mistakes. I still stand by everything that I said 100%. However, I made some mistakes nonetheless. First of all, I failed to provide adequate and very necessary context for what I was saying. I'm still relatively new to this whole YouTube thing, to this idea of blabbing my thoughts to the internet to an audience of people that don't know me personally, don't have any insight into the inner machinations of my mind. The inner machinations of my mind are an enigma. Don't have a full appreciation of my background and my perspectives. Not to mention the fact that when you're a fairly active part of the online community and you are privy to information from people such as Alan Aragon, Eric Helms, Lyle McDonald, it's very easy to forget that not everyone has that same background and that same knowledge base as you do. It's also very hard to present the entirety of context for any point regarding nutrition, because if I were to attack it from every angle and present every argument, the video would be like an hour long. Uh, and that's before all the video game analogies. However, with those things said, it's still my responsibility to make sure that I am aware of and in tune with my audience and to be very careful about presenting these little sound bites of information that in isolation and without context could be misconstrued, could be even potentially dangerous. I'm also aware of the fact that I use quite a bit of sarcasm in my videos. It's just a part of who I am, it's a part of my personality, it's a part of my sense of humor, and therefore it translates into my content. However, it's important for you to know that my sarcasm is never directed towards a person or a particular group of people. If anything, uh, and this is going to sound kind of weird, the sarcasm is directed at the misinformation itself. It's not my intention to offend or to insult anyone. I'm trying to educate. I'm trying to arm you with weapons of light with which you can fight against darkness. I use the word bro quite a bit, jokingly. Chances are that anyone watching this video right now is not a bro, and let me explain what I mean. When I say bro, I don't mean someone that eats a certain type of food, or someone that trains in a certain manner, or even someone that clings to antiquated, anti-scientific methodologies. When I think of a bro, I think of someone that does all these things, all the while insisting upon ignorance, refusing to educate themselves or stay up to date on the current information, and when presented with the current scientific information, they knock it out of the hands of whoever presented it to them. So if you're watching this video, if you are immersing yourself in knowledge, if you are open to new ideas, whether you prefer to eat one way or whether you like training another way, it doesn't matter. You are not a bro in my book. And even if you are a bro, so be it. It's not my place to judge. Now, onto the actual issue at hand, onto the content, the information. Let me start by telling you what I am not saying. I am not saying that you have to eat processed foods. And in fact, I lament the portion of the flexible dieting community, they call themselves if it fits your macroers, who have decided to make it their mission to not only determine, but also display on all forms of social media 
just how much junk food they can manage to eat and still get ripped. I am also not saying that you shouldn't eat lots of fruits and vegetables and other whole foods. You absolutely should. In fact, that's something that I did say in the last video, but because I'm terrible at scheduling and remembering things, I had to get up in the middle of the video and go get a haircut, and so some things didn't get included because of the confusion. So let me let past rants take care of this one for me. Past rants? So yes, as I've said before, fill your diet predominantly with whole, minimally processed, micronutrient-dense foods. Thank you, past rants. Get a haircut, sir. Now, I'm also not saying that eating more than the bare minimum of whole foods that you need to get your required micronutrients is necessarily bad either. Although keep in mind there is an upper threshold when it comes to fiber, which often accompanies whole foods, and consuming too much can lead to issues with nutrient absorption. But anyway, what I am saying is this. For anyone who is relatively healthy, moderately active, who follows the aforementioned advice and composes their diet predominantly of whole foods, Adding processed foods on top of that is not only not going to hurt or detract from their health or their physique, but in some cases can actually benefit them. Another way of saying this, or basically the bottom line, would be this. There's no such thing as a good or bad food outside of the context of someone's entire diet. And that's something that I should have said in the last video that I didn't. Outside of the context of someone's entire diet. Let me give you some examples. Let's take me for example. Now I eat lots of fruits and vegetables and other whole foods all throughout the year, but especially when I'm cutting. When I'm cutting, it's not uncommon to find me eating exclusively clean foods. But there's a distinction. And here's the distinction. Let's say you catch me on any given day eating nothing but clean foods. Okay? I haven't had a bite of breakfast cereal, I haven't had one single delicious pepperoni flavored Pringle or combo. Let's say I haven't even had a scoop of protein powder, because as you may or may not be aware, whey protein is a highly processed fast food. Now obviously I'm eating my fruits and my vegetables and my whole foods to make sure that I reach micronutrient sufficiency and to make sure that I don't have any deficiencies. However, the reason that I exceed my bare minimum and continue eating whole foods, or in other words, the reason that I don't fit any junk foods in whatsoever, is not that I think that the junk foods would harm me, it's not that I think that the junk foods would somehow detract from my progress. It's also not that I think that eating more whole foods past the bare requirements is going to yield additional benefits. Now it could be an insurance policy to make sure that I'm getting my minimums, but I trust the recommendations of Eric Helms. I trust conventional wisdom that says make sure you eat two to three servings of fruits and vegetables per day. And these things, combined with me, once again, composing my diet day in and day out, predominantly of whole foods, makes me pretty confident that I'm not going to run into any issues on this front. So the reason that I'm eating all clean foods and no junk foods is simply because that makes it easier for me to adhere to my calories. I know I could eat some cinnamon toast crunch or a delicious bag of pepperoni flavored combos, but if I choose to eat that instead of a bowl of oatmeal, I know I'm going to be hungry later. And if I'm hungry later, there's a good chance I'm not going to adhere to my calories. Or maybe I'm disciplined and I will adhere to my calories, but I'm still going to be hungry and I don't want to be hungry. Now, let's flip the coin and take somebody who's in the exact opposite situation. Let's take somebody who's in a caloric surplus or a gaining phase with a very low appetite. Again, let's say he's had all his fruits and vegetables today and every day, as well as a variety of other whole foods. But today he has a thousand calories left to eat and he has no appetite with which to eat them. He's not hungry. In this situation, eating more whole foods on top of the whole foods he's already had is not only not going to yield him any additional benefit, it's actually potentially going to be disadvantageous because it's going to cause him to not hit his caloric goals. Let's take another guy who's cutting. Let's say, again, he's had his fruits and vegetables today and he eats whole foods day in and day out. But today, for whatever weird reason, it was a strange day at work and he's only consumed 10 grams of fat. He gets home, he is presented with two options. He can eat either a bowl of broccoli or a bowl of ice cream. Why doesn't he eat both? Let's just say he doesn't like eating too much before he goes to bed. I know these are weird scenarios, but this is hypothetical. Just bear with me. In this case, the broccoli would not provide any additional benefit for him, and acutely, the ice cream would actually be a better choice for him because he is underneath his daily recommended intake for fat. Dietary fat is important, especially when cutting for health and a number of various functions throughout the body. Now, is one day of dipping low on fat gonna kill him? No, but let's up the stakes and say that he's been chronically deficient in fat. Obviously, in this case, probably consuming some omega-3s or 6s would be better for him, but do you see what I'm getting at? Do you see where I'm coming from? In isolation, without context, foods are neither good nor bad. They are simply there, and they serve functions. And some of them serve the function 
of delivering minerals and vitamins that you need. Some of them don't serve that function so much. They just fulfill macronutrient requirements. And some of them are somewhere in between. I mean, take pizza, for instance. And sorry if you're vegan. This is about to be a very bad example. You can ignore this. I'm sure the majority of people would call pizza a bad food, but you've got dairy, it's got amino acids, sometimes you have vegetables. Even foods like this, Twinkies, Pop-Tarts, they're not completely nutritionally devoid. I bring up the example of protein powder, which has a fantastic amino acid profile, but it's a processed fast food. Classic bodybuilders refuse to eat fruit because it had sugar in them. Who gets to say what food is good and what food is bad? Where, where do you draw the line? How can you arbitrarily label something with morality that has no inherent morality and has no value outside of context. I maintain that you cannot. And so do a lot of people who are a hell of a lot smarter than I am. Now you may be saying, rants. What about sugar? What about saturated fat? These things are linked with diseases. And that would probably require an entire quest of its own, but for now, suffice it to say that as you have no doubt heard before, correlation does not equal causation and Twinkies do not cause cardiovascular disease or kill people. It is the overconsumption of calories and the sedentary lifestyle that oftentimes accompany Twinkies, as well as the lack of micronutrients and whole foods because you are dominating your diet with Twinkies that causes cardiovascular disease and kills people. Take something like trans fat, for example. We know that in order to consume the amount of trans fat necessary to directly harm you, you would have to be downing jars of name brand full sugar peanut butter a day. And anybody who's downing jars of name brand full sugar peanut butter a day, or any peanut butter for that matter, is automatically taken off of the list of people who are rationally composing their diet predominantly of whole, minimally processed, micronutrient dense foods. Now, I realize that you can't very well gain any experience points from a patch, but I hope that the patch at least installs successfully, and who knows, maybe it'll raise the level cap so that in the future, you can continue to gain experience points and level up. In any case, until next time, you lot of rants, bugging out.